How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, we've tested out bifacial solar panels in the past to try to measure the impact compared to monofacial panels. We've seen a maximum of 4% increase, but common feedback that you guys gave is, hey, that mounting is not ideal for getting the most out of the bifacial panels. So that's exactly what we're testing out today. I've tested this over multiple different days, some with full sun and others like today that are mostly cloudy. So let's go ahead and check out the setup, see what the test results are. So so you can make the smart decision on mounting for your own DIY solar setup. So let's take a look at the setup here, how we're getting our data. And it's pretty simple. I have a Delta Pro here, another Delta Pro, and then a Delta Pro 3. So those are all connected to one of these panels. And each of these panels is a 395 watt Trina bifacial panel. And then we take the MC4 connectors into this little power meter here. These are actually used for like radio control cars. So they can easily handle one panel. They can handle a ton of current. This one can handle 150 amps, but they only go up to 100 volts. So that's why you can't do much more than one panel. Sometimes you can do two panels in series. They'll give you all your critical parameters, your amperage, your voltage, your overall wattage. And then this kind of scrolls through and you'll see your watt hours. That is specifically what we're measuring. How much energy throughout each day of testing are we harvesting? So we'd compare this example to this example. And then we have one over here with the panel that's mounted on the ground. And then for the three different mounting setups, we have a classic DIY where you're just laying against the ground and leaning against something. Here we have two T-posts, a pressure treated two by four that's laying on some custom T-post brackets. They're really handy for mounting panels and you'll see a link in the description for those exact brackets. But this one specifically was the point of common criticism and that is, hey, if you lay bifacial panels on the ground, don't expect to get gains in terms of how much more power it will produce because you're not getting any light underneath it. So that's why we move on to our second and third different mounting scenarios. And for these, we have them mounted again on T-posts. So the same kind of mounting, we just have now the front side elevated 41 inches off the ground. And that is the same for the second and third different mounting. So I really expect to see the difference between the low mounting and these two different setups here. But then there was an additional question. What if you put something underneath that would help to reflect the light, such as white rock? Now, two big benefits here, the white rock can do some weed control, some grass control. So if you had a large array that you're mounting, you could have a nice clean foundation there where you're not having to mow under it. And are there any gains to be had with white rock compared to just grass? So we'll finish up the fourth day here of testing. I have some trees, so I'm only able to actually do testing about three or four hours out of the day, making sure there's no shade on any of the panels to skew the results. And then we'll have days where it's very sunny and reasonable temps, but also days where we had quite a few clouds. So it's gonna reduce the amount of energy and show us, does that change the percentage increase we get with these scenarios compared to the low mount scenario? So the results are in and overall I'd say you guys were right. We have some interesting findings across our low mount, high mount, and then high mount with white rock. And then those four days of testing that we did. Now remember the T-post setups here are good temporary setups, super inexpensive, easy to install, but I'm not recommending those as a permanent solution. If you're looking to offset your monthly power bill and something that will stand up for years and years and years or actually decades and decades, that's probably a little bit more of a professionally installed system. If you wanna start investigating that path, you can see a link in the description and start where I did last year. And that is to get the sizing and rough cost with just a little information on your home in a matter of minutes. And if that rough estimate looks good, then they can actually connect you with local installers so you can actually start locking in quotes and also checking those installers to see if they're the right partner for you. Now, I do recommend if you're looking to go solar to offset that monthly power bill, probably do that sooner rather than later. Later. Things like net metering, tax credits, or for me in Illinois, renewable energy credits are not going to be around forever. And that really helps you get better return on investment and pay off your investment in fewer years. So for the results, I have a table here and I also put it in a bar chart and you'll see of the four days of testing and in parentheses, it'll give you the rough conditions. I didn't put the high temperature. High temperature was between 74 degrees Fahrenheit and about 85 degrees Fahrenheit and did fluctuate a little bit each day. 
So the first two days were totally sunny. The third day was mostly sunny. And then the fourth day, more clouds did move in. And you can see that reflected in how many watt hours we accumulated through each one of the tests. Now in the top table, you'll see just the raw watt hours. And then below that, we'll start converting over to the percentages gained. So we're comparing high panel to the low panel and then high panel white rock to the low panel. Now you can see when you had a lot of sun, the high panel was in the range of five to 7% better than the low panel. So that is considerably better than I've seen in the past, which was only about 4%. But with the white rock underneath, we we're about seven to over 10%. So it actually did move the needle there. And that is a considerable amount more power being created and then overall energy that you're producing per day. And then on the fourth day, that gave us a good trial where we had clouds. And you can see that the high mount and specifically the high mount with white rock really have substantial gains compared to the low mount, which could be a massive benefit depending on how you're designing your system. Sometimes we design for worst case scenario where we wanna make it through multiple days or even a week of overcast clouds where we're over paneling. And you can see here with this mount and possible white rock, that could give you significant gains when you're not getting direct sunlight. But if we roll all that up, then you can see in the bold at the bottom that we're about 9% gains with high panel across all the days, accumulating up all the watt hours. And then with the high panel and white rock, we're almost at 12%. So both of those are great results. And I would recommend that you look at a higher mounting position for your bifacials if you wanna get those type of results. Now, if you want more information on these little mounts here, if that's something that you're looking to do, you can check out this video right here and I'll walk you through the quick process of actually setting these up. And if you're interested in what does it actually take to roof mount and grid tie a system that would offset your monthly power bill, you can check out this video right here and I'll walk you through every step to see if that's something that you might wanna take on in the future, or do you need to look to the professionals like the link in the description. And as always, I welcome your comments down below the video, and thanks for joining me on this one, and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.